If you're feeling bored and don't know what to draw, today I'm sharing five fun art projects for those times when you have no idea what to put in your sketchbook. Put the kettle on, grab a cup of tea and your sketchbook because today I'm hopefully gonna help you out with some creative inspiration. Our video today is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Shada and today we're doing a much requested tutorial topic and that is art to do when you're bored. Creative projects to kind of get that artistic spark back. This is perfect for the beginner and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get started. I am going to complete all of the projects in my art journal. This is a notebook from Had Drawn Epoch. I really like it. Um, good thick pages. I also have a number of markers and brush pens, but you should feel like you can complete these pieces with any medium. And then it's also nice to have some fine liners like a Pigma Micron or a Sharpie on hand. Let's jump right in. The first one we're going to do is an abstract. Abstract is fun, it gets you thinking outside of the box and flexing those creative muscles. I don't want you to necessarily follow along with my color palette. This is a time for you to think about color, think about how they work together, what looks nice, try this a few different ways. Think about shape and form. Uh, you can see I'm kind of moving the markers in different ways, some horizontal strokes, vertical strokes, some circular <laughs> strokes, I don't know. Um, and then I am adding some, I've started I started with light colors and then I'm kind of amping things up a little with a darker burgundy and that gray is pretty, pretty nice and rich as well. Um, and I've kind of completed a pattern block in the center of the page here, kind of like in the way that's looking. Now I'm going to take my graphic line marker from Derwent. Um, this is just a good fine liner like a Pigma Micron and I'm going to add some smaller details. I'm also using a Koi brush pen in black to add those smaller graphic black details but with just a little more oomph. That black gives me that nice um, kind of, I don't know, kind of some pow. It brings the whole project together and again you're thinking about form you're thinking about lines just don't think about it too hard if that was my own criticism of myself was that I could feel like I was trying to make something pretty or something good and um, it's okay if it like looks weird I think abstract should be fun and free So we've warmed up with a little abstract and now I want to share four more projects with you but I want to take a second because you might be thinking like everything looks a little different and that is because one we are in a new apartment Chris and I recently moved um, from Prince Edward Island to Halifax Nova Scotia it was planned a long time ago we did it as safely as we could and it went well and we're actually in quarantine right now we're doing two weeks which is <laughs> um, and then speaking of that, my hair is kind of new because it's like crazy long right now. I haven't been to a salon in a really long time and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um, and then I have new glasses. Yes, like positive. Um, so recently Glasses USA sent me a whole bunch of pairs and I was super excited because um, I haven't been wearing a lot of makeup recently. You might be also in that boat. And I just feel like glasses kind of like finish your face in a really nice way. And so my quarantine look has just, just been glasses plus lipstick or lip balm, that really works. Um, so I'm gonna show you my glasses. I had a lot of fun ordering a bunch of pairs on the site glassesusa.com. They actually have, I think over 6,000 pairs and they have their own in-house brands and then they have designer brands like, um, like Gucci and Ray-Ban and Chloe and I got this Michael Kors pair which I'm loving. I love the kind of pinky tortoise and then this little detail on the side right there. It's just something a little different which I like, that little accent. Um, and yeah, you can add your prescription to almost any pair of frames and sunglasses which I really like. Summer's coming up and I love to have a pair of prescription sunglasses in the car for when I'm driving. So let me try out a few pairs for you. I love, okay, you guys are gonna laugh. I really like this pair. Gray, right? Gray. 
<laughs> Who doesn't need a gray pair of glasses? Um, yeah, these ones are a good size as well. The shopping experience is very risk-free. Um, they have free shipping and returns. You get a full refund within 14 days of your purchase and they have a 100% money back guarantee and every pair comes with a warranty for one year. I really like these ones as well, same thing. They're not too big for my face, they're nice and small. They have a good online try-on tool as well, which makes the difference, I think. Check out these babies. <laughs> such a geek. Um, these ones are really nice because they are blue light blocking. That's so important when you're working on screens all day like I am. I can video edit for up to four or five hours, not really realizing where the time has gone. And it's so important to protect your eyes. So those ones are actually my prescription plus blue light blocking. And finally, these ones are a little bigger, but I do love a round aviator been rocking that style for a year now and is definitely my favorite. So yes, so many good glasses. Let me give you a quick rundown of the online try-on tool and then we are back to art. This is it here. It is a virtual mirror. It lets you try on any pair of glasses or sunglasses on the site, which is pretty amazing and frankly, quite necessary, I would say. It's super easy to choose your frames with this virtual mirror. To head to Glasses USA and check out the frames that I purchased, use the links in the video description below. All right, our second project might just be my favorite. You start by using washi tape to make a little frame. You wanna block out a rectangle. This tape comes off the page really well. And then you're going to grab some shades of one color. I'm using gray. Yeah, I'm using gray. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple landscape. You don't have to do gray. You could do this in shades of orange or red or brown, I think, or green. You get the idea. Um, so take the different colors of marker and with each one, you're going to kind of make a horizon line. So it could just be a simple slope. It could be some gently curving mountains. You can see every time I do a different section in a different color, I'm kind of ch changing up that horizon line a little bit as well and I'm just kind of going and doing a bunch of different grays I don't want to do a perfect pattern like you don't want to do light gray medium dark light medium dark switch it up make it a little interesting and just have fun and don't overthink it again the more you think about this I think the stiffer it kind of gets and that is always my downfall is overthinking and trying to make things good that is like the kiss of death so there we go that's done and now we're going to take a white gel pen or even a paint pen mine would probably be a little too thick but they do come in different nib sizes basically just use what you have on hand you could do this in black or you could do it with a gold jelly roll pen or something like that but you can see what I'm doing is just adding some lines sometimes I'm following those horizon lines that I laid out with marker and other times I'm going against them or just adding something interesting in one corner or one section so basically again don't overthink it that's kind of the rule with all of these art for boredom is that they're all supposed to you know like get you a little bit out of your comfort zone and doing something fun and silly and kind of try to think like a kid and just go with it making art for fun will make art fun for you again I think um, okay and then I'm taking a peach color you want to use a yellow or pink here or peachy tone and we're going to put a little semicircle off to one side I wouldn't put it right in the middle and then you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing a sun and it's a very simple illustration. It begins with that semicircle and then you do these rays. They start small near your sun, near the semicircle, and they get larger as you go out to the outside of that rectangle. So you're just filling in the entirety of the area that you have left free. One little tip I have is don't put your horizon line right in the middle. You want it either at the bottom or the, towards the top, and you can see mine's in the upper third here. I'm just going to fix that horizon line slightly, and then the most satisfying part of the entire process is absolutely taking off that tape, and then you get to see those crisp lines, and ooh, that looks so good, and a nice wide margin around it is just all the better, and it makes it look so sophisticated. There we go. That's project number two, our little landscape. Okay, our third idea for when you are bored and you just need to do something outside the box, something different, is this little doodles practice that I often love to do in my art journal. 
Pick a color palette again. Try to think of this color palette ahead of time. You'll see I'm working with all warm colors, oranges, peaches, pinks, and reds. And we're going to lay down a grid of splotches. It's just color splotches. Now, I know that I'm going to doodle flowers and leaves on top. So yeah, admittedly, some of them look a little bit like flowers, um, but again, Try to let your mind wander and be free with it. Once you've done nine or 12 areas of color on the page, you're going to grab that fine liner. I'm using the 05 Pigma Micron nib, and I am going to turn each one of these areas of color into a flower. Now, if you need help drawing flowers and leaves, I have lots of videos about that. We're not gonna to get too into that here. But what I really wanted to show is you could do anything. You could lay down a grid of color blocks and then turn them into fruit doodles or better yet, junk food doodles or um, I don't know, little animals, little birds, little monsters, little butterflies, anything goes. Whatever you think you would like to draw to kind of get your creativity spot and that would just be fun for you. Of course, I chose flowers because I'm boring and predictable, but I do think they look pretty cute. And uh, yeah, you're just going to kind of go with the shape of the color, um, but don't let it direct your illustration too much. You don't need to be too stiff about this, I guess is what I'm saying. Just use those color blocks as a way to spark an idea. The square one on the left, the orange, I had no idea what to make it, so I just did a trio of leaves, and I think it turned out just fine. Let your mind wander. <laughs> if I said that already, think outside the box, get those creative juices flowing, and do whatever speaks to you in a color palette that excites you. I'm going to fill these in and then we will tackle project number four. Is it number four? Yeah, I think it's number four. <laughs> Our next one is a classic shade of project and that is a wreath. A wreath is something that I paint or draw often because it's a great way to get yourself back into the spirit of painting or doodling, especially when you've been away from it for a little while. Also, if you're learning to draw or paint flowers and leaves, this gives you a form. You just draw that circle or oval in the middle of the page and you follow it. And I think that can be nice. You're not really concerned with thinking about layout or design. You're just thinking about the drawing or the painting. And what I'm doing here is exactly that. I've drawn my pencil oval and then I'm using a dark warm gray to go around that oval and add pairs of little oval shaped leaves. And and I've also done these little curving lines going off in every direction. Uh, after the warm gray portion is complete, <laughs> I will come back in here with my fine liner, my Pigma Micron, and we're going to add some detail to the leaves. And then on those curving lines that I added, I am putting a little flower at the end of each one. So just a simple little daisy or kind of looks like a little chamomile flower in profile. And um, yeah, I think that's really sweet. That's another nice thing about the wreath. It could just be leaves, it could just be flowers, or you could mix it up and add a few of both. This is also, I think this goes without saying, but you could do this in any color palette. You could be boring and predictable like me and do it in gray <laughs> or whatever your favorite color is, or you could spice it up a little and get a little crazy. Um, what I'm doing is kind of adding some more gray, <laughs> more gray to my flowers. I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow. And then you might've noticed that I sketched in a few leaves that have no marker color. And then I'm also going to illustrate a few dark, tiny black leaves. And by adding these alternative you know, doodles and illustrations, it really brings the wreath to life. So I've started with gray leaves, then I added flowers, then I added some blank leaves, I guess we'll call them, and then some tiny dark ones. And all of that comes together to create something that's really intricate. When I started it, I had no idea where this was gonna go. And that's really the key of doing art. Uh, for boredom, I think, is to just see where your hand takes you. <laughs> see where that pen takes you. That is all done. Wreaths are a great place to put a little quote or poem, um, but they're also just great for practicing your doodles. 
All right, my friends, last one. This is another one that I like to do often and you'll notice that it might look familiar because I often add these to my plan with me's. Um, what we're going to do is create a color block. Now you could do this with a piece of ripped or cut paper. I decided to try doing it with marker. Then we are going to take a white pen touch paint pen. You could also use a gel pen for this or any color of paint pen really. And we are going to do a very simplified, almost silhouette type illustration. So I'm doing these messy flowers. I do have to go over them a few times. I find the paint pens sort of um, sometimes the color you just need to layer it a bit to get that true white but I'm doing these very very simplified little five or four petal flowers and then what I'll do is I'll use my Pigma Micron again with the fine liner and I'll just add the simplest of stems and stamens so we're, we're doing a really really simple illustration but I think by creating something that is simple but striking and also beautiful that it gets you feeling confident with your art Art, and you get to make something that you like. That's what this channel is all about. Doing more with less. You don't have to do something super complicated to make a piece of art that you really like. And that's what I like to really show here. So this one is good. Again, it doesn't have to be flowers, but flowers and leaves are always a good idea. Well, I think that was quite fun, wasn't it? I enjoyed sitting down with a cup of tea and just trying some different projects. I actually didn't prep anything for this video other than just the list of what I wanted to do. So I was approaching everything just the way you would be kind of with a fresh mind and hopefully a little bit of that childish spirit of just trying to forget about getting it right and have fun with it. Think about doing a little abstract, maybe a pretty wreath, maybe a not so pretty wreath, a little landscape. For the landscape, all you really need is washi tape. And then what makes it come together, I think, is that white gel pen. And I like the Uniball from Signo. It's the best gel pen that I've found. I'll link those supplies in the video description. Thank you so much for watching today. Remember, click the link in the video description to visit glassesusa.com to check out the frames that you saw me try on and sign up to receive 65% off your first pair of frames.